Hi, Mike. I'm Joe Spencer. As part of your training program, I'm supposed to show you something about front wheel alignment. Hey, that's great. I'm anxious to learn more, but I better tell you I don't know anything about alignment, not even the terms. Alignment isn't that hard to understand once you know the angles. First of all, you have to understand why we even need front wheel alignment. Front wheel alignment is necessary to balance all the forces created by the vehicle when it's in motion. The forces like friction, gravity, centrifugal force, and momentum. Now, proper front wheel alignment will make a car hold the road better, steer better, and make it more stable. Will it really do all that? It sure will. But there are a lot of variables that can affect front wheel alignment. Like tires, for instance. Everything engineered into the front end of this car is dependent on how the tires contact the road. The road contact is affected by the tire tread, tire inflation, the roundness of the wheels and tires, and the size of the tires. I didn't know they were that important. They are. If the tires are different sizes, or one is worn more than the other, or if one tire is underinflated, it might tend to pull the car to one side. Because if one tire is worn more than the other, or is underinflated, it has more tread rubber in contact with the road, and therefore has more rolling friction or drag than the other side. So the car will want to pull to the side with the most drag. So checking tire pressure is important if the car pulls. That's part of the reason. But equally important, tire pressures have an effect on how your tires wear. If the tires are underinflated, your tires will have a tendency to wear more on the outside edges of the tread, like this. And if you overinflate your tires, they'll wear mostly in the center, like this tire. So proper tire inflation plays a very important part in how your car behaves and how long your tires last. But there are other things that affect how your car behaves and the way the tires wear, right? That's right. The camber, for example. Camber is the amount that the tire is leaning in or out from the vertical position. If the top of the tire leans away from the car, it has positive camber. If the top of the tire leans toward the car, it has negative camber. Okay, positive, the top of the tire leans out, negative, the top of the tire leans in. But what does it do? Well, first, maximum tire life is obtained with zero camber because the tire tread contacting the road is the same all across the tire. However, because of the many different road surfaces and conditions that you find in today's driving, it's not really desirable to keep a zero camber condition. Because roads are not flat but crowned, higher in the center than at the shoulder, a little more positive camber on the left wheel helps keep the car on the road. I'm sorry, Joe, I don't see how that works. Could you explain it a little more? Okay, what would happen if you tried to roll a cone-shaped cup across a table? Well, it would want to roll around the point of the cup. Right. The effect of positive camber is like that. The road and tire angles form a cone shape trying to turn around its center. The effect is that the crown of the road and the effect of positive camber cancel each other out. What happens if the camber isn't set properly? If the camber is not adjusted to the correct specification, it will tend to pull to one side, the side with a more positive camber, and your tires will not wear properly. If you have excessive wear on the outside edge of the tread, your car may have too much positive camber. Too much negative camber will cause excessive wear on the inside edge of the tire tread. Okay, suppose the car needs a camber adjustment. There are adjustment assemblies made up of a bolt passing through two off-center cam-shaped washers held in place by a nut. The washers work against shoulders in the cross member to move the control arm in or out. These are called eccentric assemblies. On all models except Pacer, there's an assembly on each lower control arm. Just loosen the nut on the back of the eccentric assembly and turn the eccentric bolt until the camber is adjusted to specifications for each wheel. On AMC Pacer models, there are two eccentric assemblies on each lower control arm. Turn both front and rear eccentric bolts until the specified camber is obtained for each front wheel. Jeep vehicles have a solid front axle and the camber is built right in so you can't adjust it. 
Well, then, what if the alignment machine says camber's not right? On a Jeep vehicle, the cause is usually bent or worn out parts which must be replaced. Check your technical service manual for the procedures. Now let's talk about caster. Caster is an angle that helps return the front wheels to the straight ahead position after a turn and helps keep them straight. And the easiest way to explain it is to imagine a straight line drawn through the ball joints. If the line hits the ground ahead of a vertical center line, the wheel has positive caster. If the line hits the ground behind the vertical center line, it has negative caster. Will tires show abnormal wear if the caster isn't adjusted right? Usually not. Caster has little effect on tire wear. However, if there is a big difference in caster from one side of the vehicle to the other, it might cause the vehicle to pull. Wait a minute. I thought camber or tire problems made it pull. That's right, but they usually show the telltale tire wear patterns we talked about. Now, besides causing the vehicle to pull, improper caster can make the vehicle difficult to turn at low speeds and could cause poor return to the straight ahead position when coming out of a turn. Okay, I get it. But how do you adjust the caster? Caster can be adjusted on AMC Gremlin, Matador, and Hornet by turning the adjusting nuts on the strut rod. If you lengthen the strut rod, you get more positive caster. If you shorten it, you get more negative caster. On the AMC Pacer, the caster adjustment is different. The adjustment is made by turning the rear eccentric on the lower control arm. That will swing the control arm forward for more positive caster or rearward for more negative caster. Now, on the Jeep vehicle, it's another story. The caster is engineered into the front axle and suspension. If you've thoroughly checked it out and you're sure the caster is off, you can use tapered shims between the axle spring pad and the spring. To make the caster more positive, you would install the thick edge of the shim toward the front of the vehicle. To make the caster more negative, you would install the shim with the thick edge pointing toward the rear. But before you shim the spring pads, you better inspect for bent parts because that could cause the problem. Yeah, I imagine bent parts could change the front end alignment on any vehicle. They sure could. In fact, even the load on the vehicle can affect the alignment. Look, to maintain good handling and tire wear characteristics, the front end parts are designed to automatically change alignment angles to compensate for cornering and rough road conditions. When a wheel moves up in relation to the car, the top of the wheel moves outward, producing a positive camber condition. When the wheel moves down in relation to the car, the camber is decreased slightly in the negative direction. But what does that have to do with weight? Well, put a heavy load in the back of the vehicle or raise the back of the vehicle. This changes the relationship between the front wheel and the chassis and the body. As I just told you, when the wheel changes in relation to the body, the angles change. So when diagnosing a front-end complaint, be sure you know how the driver loads the vehicle and be sure it doesn't exceed the normal load limits. Let's look at something else that affects steering, toe-in and toe-out. Toe-in is the amount that the tires are closer together at the extreme front than at the extreme rear. Toe-out is the opposite of toe-in. The larger measurement is at the front of the tires. And that affects steering? Well, toe-in, no, but toe-out can make the steering very sensitive and the car tends to wander all over the road. But toe-in or toe-out can really wear the tires. Look, the ideal toe of a vehicle is to have the wheels straight ahead so you have no sideways drag or scuff on your tires. Too much toe-in will wear a feathered edge on the inside of the tread. Too much toe-out wears a feathered edge on the outside then all you have to do is set them straight ahead. Well, not quite. You have to compensate for small deflections which tend to spread the wheels outward at the front. So if you set the wheels straight ahead, they would spread apart more in front than at the back when driving. Oh, I get it. You set them in at the front so they can spread out to be even when you're driving down the road. Right. The normal toe-in setting is usually about an eighth of an inch, a little less for Jeep vehicles. It's fairly easy to adjust, too. On AMC cars, first get the wheels pointed ahead equally on each side. 
Then turn the two tie rod adjusting tubes until you get the toe end adjusted. Once you have the toe end adjusted, turn both tie rod adjusting tubes an equal amount in the same direction until the steering wheel is in the straight ahead position. On Jeep vehicles, there's only one adjusting tube to set toe in. It connects the outer tie rod ends. On CJs, the tube runs from one side to the other with clamps on each end. On Cherokee, Wagoneer, and trucks, there's one short tube on the driver's side. Then how do you center the steering wheel? All Jeep vehicles have another tube on the connecting link. Turning this after toe-in is adjusted centers the steering wheel. Well, we've talked about the more common front-end angles, but to be a top-notch front-end man, you should know something about two non-adjustable angles. Steering axis inclination, or what us old-timers used to call kingpin inclination, and toe-out on turns. First, steering axis inclination. It's the angle between a line drawn through the ball joints and a vertical line viewed from the front. Why do we need steering axis inclination? Well, Mike, there are three reasons. First of all, it helps reduce the possibility of road shock turning the front wheels. It also gives automatic straightening of the wheels, and it tends to keep the front wheels in a straight-ahead position. Here's how. When the vehicle is in the straight-ahead position, the body is at its closest point to the ground. When the wheel is turned, the spindle tries to move down. This is because the spindle is attached to ball joints at an angle the steering axis inclination angle. But the spindle can't move down because the vehicle is on a solid surface. So the body moves up. I get it. Because of gravity, the weight of the vehicle pushing down on the suspension tends to return the spindles to the straight ahead position. Right. Now you can easily see why the steering axis inclination can make a vehicle straighten automatically out of turns and be less subjected to sudden turning because of road shock. The steering axis inclination is the result of the physical location of the upper and lower ball joints. A steering axis inclination problem isn't very common. However, if you're sure all the adjustable angles are within specifications, and your customer's complaint leads you to suspect the steering axis inclination angle, start looking for bent or badly worn upper or lower control arms or steering knuckles. Now what about this toe out on turns? Well, we need toe-out on turns to prevent abnormal tire wear from the tires slipping on the road surface during a turn. Why would the tires slip on turns? When the vehicle goes into a turn, the wheel on the outside is moving in a larger circle than the wheel on the inside. To prevent the tires from slipping, the wheel on the outside of the turn should turn at an angle less than the inside wheel. And that results in toe-out on turns. The angle of the steering arms determines toe-out on turns to keep tire slip to a minimum. The toe-out on turns should be about the same for both right and left-hand turns. Now, if the tires show signs of scuffing and the toe-end is within specification, it can indicate bent steering arms. I understand. Is there anything else I should know about front wheel alignment? Yes, here's something you should know about ball joints. There are two kinds on AMC cars. The weight-carrying ball joint that mounts in the control arm that carries the spring, and the friction ball joint that mounts on the other control arm. In Jeep models, the job is done by what we call ball studs, mounted in the ends of the axle and in the steering knuckle. The lower one is fixed in place, but the upper is adjustable, so you can set the spindle tightness. That procedure is in your Jeep technical service manual. What happens if they're worn? Well, worn ball joints can affect all the front end angles and can cause clunking noises in the front end on rough roads. Worn steering linkage can cause looseness in the steering wheel and can magnify a front end shimmy. By the way, here's a simple thing that many mechanics forget. Front wheel bearing adjustment should be part of your inspection procedure. Now, before we go on, why don't you tell me what you would do first before you started alignment adjustments? Well, I would look at the tires to see if they've been running with the proper air pressure and are the same type and size, and to see if they are worn in a way that shows the alignment is out, 
like wearing off the tire's edges because the camber is incorrect. Next, I would drive the car and take the customer with me to verify the complaint. And then I would check for damaged parts and, like you just said, check the front wheel bearings to see if they are loose. And finally, before making any adjustments, I'd be sure the tires were at the reduced load limit and that there's a full tank of gas. And here's one more important item. Be sure to adjust only the angles that are not within specifications. Not all of them, just because the car is on the rack. This is the best way to take care of your customers and build a reputation as a good front-end man. Okay, we've covered a lot. Here are the important points to remember. Don't forget, camber is the amount the top of the tire leans in or out from the vertical position. To understand caster, you have to imagine a straight line drawn through the ball joints. If the line hits ahead of a vertical center, it's positive caster. Behind the vertical center, it's negative caster. Toe in is the amount that the tires are closer together at the front. Toe out is the opposite. Steering axis inclination takes a little thought to understand. It is the angle between a line drawn through the ball joints and a vertical line viewed from the front. Toe out on turns. When a vehicle goes into a turn, the wheel on the outside is moving in a larger circle than the wheel on the inside. There's one more important thing to remember. Establish and use a good pre-alignment check procedure. A good check procedure will save you a lot of time and effort in solving alignment problems. What do I do if you're not here to answer my questions? If you have any questions, just look in your technical service manuals. They're loaded with information. And here's a film reference book that recaps everything we've talked about and is loaded with other front-end information. I'm sure you'll find front-wheel alignment a lot easier now that you know the angle.